some of the areas that I've just touched on, those review processes, neighborhood engagement is a really critical component and we're starting to feel a lot of um, sensitivity towards it. And that's something that might be somewhat new to your projects that we'll be asking about. And so I thought today would be a good opportunity for me to introduce that concept to you if you're not already doing it, um, depending on the process. So neighborhood engagement in and of itself is, is not necessarily required. Those enabling legislations don't give veto power to a neighborhood to say, I don't like that project, I don't like that owner, I don't want multifamily apartments, I want owner occupied. So we can't require a neighborhood process as part of our review project, but it's still critical to the discussion. You can imagine each of you in your own neighborhoods if a large project that would impact um, your quality of life or your property values, you'd like some say in that. You'd like to know what it's going to be and perhaps influence the outcome in some manner. So although it's not required, it is strongly encouraged and I cannot stress that enough. For projects that are going to the Planning Commission, the Planning Commission has almost um, made it a requirement in that if the Neighborhood Association or Business Association has come forward and said, we don't feel that we know anything about this project or we don't feel that we've had enough an opportunity to provide input. And the nuance there being, Planning Commission's not listening for whether they approve or deny it necessarily at this juncture. Did you give an opportunity to the neighborhood to provide input? If the answer is no, more often than not, the Planning Commission is going to table your process, table your application, and ask you to go meet with the neighborhood. So the neighborhood at least understands the project and hopefully provides input, you can address their concerns. When you come back, you may not have made everybody happy. The neighborhood association may not approve it. That does not mean it, the project's getting denied, um, but at least the planning commission knows that you've made that effort. And so oftentimes when we meet together up front, I will ask you to go back and meet with the neighborhood before you've made an application to us, um, whether that's for um, a rezoning or a special land use permit process. And we do that because we don't want your project to get delayed, and we think that the neighborhood has some valuable input that you should listen to because it is their neighborhood. And so we often don't dictate what that process looks like. I will ask you to call the Belknap neighborhood, the neighbor, uh, Belknap lookout, and follow whatever process they suggest. Um, in their case, they're a very uh, formal, well-organized group of individuals and probably have a consistent process for every application. So that process will often involve a neighborhood meeting of some sort, um, at a location within their neighborhood. You're providing a lot of the support, so the cost of the mailings. We, can, as a de development center, can give you that mailing list if necessary. Um, but that cost would be on you in coordination with them. There are some neighborhoods in the community that are not as well organized or um, not as formalized as the Belknap example. And in that case, usually I will try to give you a couple of different places to, um, to contact. So whether it's the neighborhood association um, that may or may not be um, functioning at that time, also maybe some of the, the key neighborhood stakeholders. So I will suggest that you call multiple organizations and try to collectively bring everybody together and, and hold a neighborhood meeting. Um, so in the future, that's something that we as a development center are looking at planning department to try to figure out a way to, to make it a little bit more streamlined or consistent. But currently that is the, the process that we suggest. When it's a buy right development, so in the example where I'm building my shoe store on Leonard and I don't need to go to planning commission, there is not the same opportunity for neighborhood input on a project by project basis. From a city perspective, we look at it and say, when we developed the master plan and when we developed the zoning ordinance, those were the public or neighborhood engagement opportunities. So now we're really just looking at whether my shoe store meets those requirements. And if it does, permits are issued. If it does not, permits are not issued. Um, what we're finding though is with the heightened sensitivity to community engagement, we do encourage the developer, the applicant, to circle back with the neighborhood to at least communicate that the project exists, hopefully to provide some input uh, or gather input on how they feel a project could be modified to better suit the needs of the neighborhood. Um, it's a double-edged sword and we recognize that because you go to a neighborhood and say, we would like your input. Maybe your client doesn't like that input and says, thanks, but no thanks. You know, as a resident, you could look at that and say, well, why did you bother coming asking me for help? So 
Some of those challenges that we're facing, we're hoping to address through future planning projects. Um, the South Division, for example, that I'll mention, we're going to be uh, mentioning a little bit later in my presentation, we'll be testing some of those neighborhood engagement processes. But for now, we do ask that, um, you know, talk with the neighborhood, meet with the association, so at least you communicate what the project is. So that way they're not surprised when my team is motive, uh, mobilized, my construction crew is on site to build my shoe store, and we've got shovels in the ground. Because that's generally the first moment where the neighborhood realizes something is changing. Maybe a building that they feel is iconic is being um, uh, demolished within their neighborhood. So it, it tends to make people very anxious because they don't understand what's happening. So I bring this to your attention today because we do feel pretty strongly about this. And the concern on the back end that I think we should all be cognizant of is Remember that streamlined process that I mentioned that Grand Rapids has that other communities don't and every project and other communities go through planning commission? Six years in Grand Haven, every project you put a shovel in the ground, you're going to planning commission. If we were to do that in Grand Rapids with how fortunate we are and how busy we are, you'd be looking at a four to five month process, okay? We currently run two meetings a month and we have about six or seven applications um, that we process. If we were to send an additional, on average, 12 LUDs permit by right development that you're currently doing through the Planning Commission process, you will be delayed by several months. So our concern is that the knee-jerk reaction that a community could have in response to the neighborhood not feeling like they're involved on an individual project by proce project basis is concerning to us, and I think it should be to you. So that's why that communication is super critical for you on the front end to make sure you're communicating to your clients. 